Hi, I'm Lindsay from Healthbox and I'm painting this wonderful picture with you today. I love painting and painting is something that anyone can do. You don't have to be good at painting to be able to paint with um, acrylic paints today and paint this picture with me is so easy when I show you how. So painting is probably seen as one of the hardest things for some people but did you know that you are born creative that anyone can paint just somewhere along the way somebody might have told you that you can't paint and it is not true so today we're going to paint using very simple steps you can go as slow or as fast as you want to go you can pause me if you need to and do your little bit and then come back and we'll start again go as go as fast or slow as you want it's totally up to you you can change the colors you can we've got two little birds on there and we can change those birds to make three birds four birds your family maybe perhaps you'd want to not leave the birds out and put more of a, a of a different scene in it's entirely up to you once you start to feel that you could do your own thing you do your own thing there's no right or wrong here and it's totally up to you now we have some equipment today and again you might not have the same equipment but just remember that use what you've got to the best that you can um, we don't maybe have the same colors maybe you don't have the same brushes but just remember that your painting is yours and nobody can tell you that it's wrong so here we have today three brushes we have a big one to do the background we have a medium one to do perhaps maybe the branches here and we have a small one to do maybe the birds okay so we have three brushes and then we have a pot of water in here, maybe half full. Again, doesn't matter how full. And then we have a palette of paint. Now, did you know what the three primary colors were? Red, yellow, blue. So here we have red, yellow, and blue. We also have a black and we also have a white here. So I'm using just a paper palette. You could use a plate, you could use a disposable plate, you could use a little bit of plastic, it's up to you. You just put those paints on. You don't need as much as this either. I've just got a lot on here to make sure that I can get the job done for you guys. So what we also have is a little bit of kitchen towel. And this just helps us to kind of keep things a little bit dry when we need to dry off the brush, make sure the brush is clean. We could also use it to make sure that um, we, we're hands, our, our hands are clean as well. So um, without further ado, we're gonna go on and paint the picture. Okay, so just to let you know that we'll start with the background and then as we gradually go on, we will build up the foreground. Um, we all love sunsets and we know that sunsets is something that everybody appreciates and feels happy. So you do your sunset the way you want to do it and I'll instruct this sunset and perhaps you might want to follow or do your own thing. Okay, remember you can pause me at any time um, and if it feels like it's going too fast, don't get stressed. Just do some deep breathing and carry on when you're ready. There is no right or wrong here, okay? Right, I am going to start with the large brush, okay? So we're gonna start from dark to the pink to the orange to the yellow, okay? So let's first of all, we, we always have a clean wet brush to start. You don't want too much water on your brush, but enough to keep it moist and keep the paint moist too. So we're just gonna go straight in there with our blue. Now the blue can feel a bit uh, uh, globby, I think that's the right word. So we're just gonna add a bit more water. So I've gone and got some water. I'm pulling out a bit of blue there. And I'm just adding a little bit of water to the paint just to make it a lot more moist, okay? So there we go. I have blue on my brush, okay? A blank canvas is very daunting, but don't worry, you give it your best shot and believe that everyone can paint. It is absolutely true you were born creative. So let's crack on. Okay, so when we do this left to right motion, we are going from the back of the canvas up. So we're sweeping up. So we're gonna start right in the corner. Deep breath, are you ready? Gonna go up into a side motion like this. So I have turned my brush slightly diagonal 
to get a good spread of paint. I'm going back to get more paint and you're just going to go left to right, sweeping up like this. Left to right, left to right. Maybe you feel like your heart is beating because you're a bit nervous. It's funny how creativity does that. Do not worry at all because that's all part of the process. That will go. And um, maybe you're not nervous and you want to just get on with it, which is fine as well. So blue and you're going up into from the corner, up left to right, sweep. It should feel quite nice. There we go. Remember, no right or wrong. Your brain will want to tell you that maybe you can't do this and you absolutely can. Okay, so we're gonna keep going there, left to right. You can go back and fill it in. It's very, very therapeutic once you get going. There we go, about, about to there. Perhaps at this point you could pause me now and uh, do, your, do your blue and come back to me in a minute. Otherwise, if you're ready, we'll carry on. So I'm gonna now wash my brush out. So when we wash our brush out, we wanna make sure we give our brush a really good cup of tea stir. Okay, now we have a clean, wet brush. Okay, so the next color that we're gonna put in is pink. Do you know how to make pink using the three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow? How do we make pink? We've got black and white. We make pink using a little bit of red, then you can see there, and some white. There's our pink. Easy. Okay, so when we now gonna apply our pink on, we're gonna go underneath the blue. And we'll start just underneath here. And we're just gonna go underneath the blue using that same sweeping. I have turned my brush again so that it's, this is a flat brush and we're just turning our brush into a diagonal there, okay? And we're just gonna go up. Now, it's about an inch thick at the start, but then it goes all the way out, right up into the corner, okay? So let's just do that now. Don't be um, worried about doing something wrong. It's easy to think you're doing something wrong, but don't worry at all. Painting should be fun. It should feel, make you feel good. At first you'll feel nervous and eventually your brain will switch off worrying and it will just enjoy the process. And stick with me and it'll be great. You'll love it at the end, okay? So keep going. So there we go, we've got pink. Again, pause me now if you'd like to and then come back to me when you're ready for the next stage, okay? Otherwise, carry on with me now. So again, I'm just gonna wash this out. We're looking for a clean, wet brush. We're not necessarily going on to the next color now. What we're gonna do is blend these two colors. So the blue and the pink, we're gonna blend. Now, there's a clean, wet brush. And when I say wet, it's not soaking wet. Perhaps if it is, you might want to dry it off. Um, we're gonna just go between the two colors with a clean, wet brush. That's how we blend. Two colors are blended using a clean, wet brush. Say it back to me, clean, wet brush, okay? So then we're gonna just go between the two colors and what we're gonna do is just scrub a clean, wet brush between the two colors. And what happens is you go up into the blue and down into the pink and then you lose that line between the two colors, okay? Perhaps now you could pause me and do that for yourself and then come back to me in a second. Otherwise, we'll carry on. Okay. The next color is, we've done blue, we've done pink. What's the next color? Orange. Okay, so orange is not a primary color. We have our primary colors on here. How do we make orange? So it is red, not much, and yellow. And there we go. There's your orange. Now, that is what we call a loaded brush. Loaded brushes are something um, that doesn't help us paint very well. There are certain things that don't help us paint very well. A loaded brush full of paint 
is one of those things. So if you have a palette with an edge on it, perhaps you could scrape off the excess paint and that will help you, just on the edge of your palette, it'll help you unload your brush of paint. Don't forget, every now and then, if your brush gets quite dry, to add some water, okay? So let's put that into our next part of the picture. So we've done our blue, we've done our pink, and now we're gonna do our orange. Okay, again, just start. So that's quite a, a light orange for me. I want to add a little bit more red. So let's just add some more red there. There we go, we've got a, quite a light orange there. You can have a light orange if you want. And we've got quite a dark orange there by adding more red. So add more red if you want. I wanted to, because I want it a bit of a fiery orange, okay? Perhaps you've chosen a different color. So let's just go and pop, pop some more. Now I want fiery orange towards the left and as we go, we stop. Perhaps now you could pause me and do your fiery orange and then come back to me to finish off with some yellow, okay? So we're gonna now carry on with the yellow. Okay, so I haven't washed my brush out, but it has been unloaded of the brush of, of orange. So it has unloaded there. So um, you can wash your brush out at this stage if you want to, or you could just, with an unloaded brush, go in for your yellow, okay? Um, because I don't mind it blending, I'm starting on the orange. I don't mind that I've got orange on my brush still. I've still got some yellow Go. I've, I've gone back to get some more yellow. And I'm just adding that at the bottom of my fiery yellow. Fiery orange, sorry. So we're just gonna keep going. Left to right, I've dried my, my canvas is a, a bit dry here. My brush is a bit dry. So perhaps you could go back to your water and just tip the edges of the brush into the water. And that'll help you just to activate a little bit more of the of the moisture back into the paint acrylics did you know are the most versatile paint you can use oils are very hard to use i know there'll be some of you that have painted before if you've ever used oils very hard if you've ever used water paints that's very hard in my opinion um, acrylics are very versatile and that means you can add as little or as much water as you want um, and you can spread it out very thinly or you can use it very thick and um, either way great results and you can have a painting painted in acrylic paints and it can look quite watercolory similarly it can look quite like an oil painting it's up to you really how you use them and I know that everybody's painting will already look different and that is no bad thing because your painting is really important to you and only you so um, Okay, let's carry on. Perhaps here you'd want to pause me and finish off your yellow. Um, whilst I, before you pause me, perhaps we could just make a very kind of quick horizontal bottom to, to this. Uh, we're looking now to horizontally put a, an imaginary line in there of, of your sunset, the base of your sunset, okay? So we've got, here, the top half of our painting. So I'm just putting in a, an imaginary line. You won't see this line because it's got black behind it, okay? Uh, perhaps pause me now and uh, come back to us so we can blend with it using a clean wet brush. Okay, so I'm now going back to wash my brush out here. And I'm looking for that clean wet brush Say it back to me, clean, wet brush. All too often, um, we think that blending two colors here, because we want to blend the, per the pink and the orange in together, and people would probably add paint to do that, but a clean, wet brush is all you need to blend, okay? So now we're gonna scrub a clean, wet brush. Um, use it maybe um, uh, vertically, not horizontally. So we're gonna just scrub between the pink and the orange just to get rid of that line be quite be quite um dynamic and really scrub it um so that you get rid of that line um i've got quite a large canvas if your canvas or or paper or canvas board whatever you're using 
is um, is is uh, quite a dry back. Um, it might take a bit more water, but uh, again, you can't really go wrong. So don't be worrying too much. There is some white into the sky, but we'll add that at the end. Okay. All right. Perhaps you could pause me now, finish your blending and come back to me in a minute. Right, we're just gonna do now the bottom half. Very, very easy. It's a mixture of orange and yellow. Can you remember how to make orange? Red and yellow, that's right. So first of all, we're just gonna put a block of yellow. I have a clean wet brush. I'm still using the same size brush, okay? There's no problem with using a different brush, a bigger brush or a smaller brush. It might just take you longer and shorter, okay? So here we have just yellow by itself. I call that raw yellow. It's a primary color. So we're just gonna go left to right and just do, you're only looking to fill this area in. Don't worry about putting an outline in. Just fill the area in left to right, very, very roughly. It is the first layer um, of, of, that, of that C, okay? There we go. Now we will put on the black eventually. Hold on. I know we're all very eager to get that black on. And did you know that when we paint a picture, we can become quite obsessed with the background, but actually your eye always goes to the, uh, the figures or to the black outline. And so actually everything pushes out towards the end of the picture and the, the, um, the background doesn't really, um, isn't really something your eye focuses on. So actually do not worry at all too much about the background. And as we become more experienced as the painting goes on, all the shadows and the things that we put on in black at the end will be um, the thing our eye focuses on. And still then, don't worry, but we'll, uh, we'll get through it together, okay? Okay, so perhaps pause me at this point. You put your yellow on. We don't need to worry about this because as you can see, it's in black. If you've decided to do your own kind of style, then maybe you want to paint it all in and, and um, carry on doing your own thing. It's totally up to you. There's no wrong or right here. Okay, so now orange, red and yellow. So I don't need to wash my brush out really, but I have done because um, it had yellow on it. Same brush again. When are we gonna use the different brush, eh? Um, the same brush is always great for using background, a big flat brush. So I'm now going back to my orange. Um, you can make more orange if you want. Um, let's make some more. So I've got yellow and red here. Um, it's always tempting to use a large surface area. Try to keep, when I'm mixing, I'm twisting and turning my brush here like this, okay? Now again, you want to unload your brush to so just pull any kind of, um, you just want it on the tip of your, of your brush, the paint. Unload your brush of paint, because then you'll get a really nice, fine line, okay? Now this is probably a little bit tricky, but, and if you've got quite an unsteady hand, don't worry. Do your best, because it's all, it's all we ask for, okay? And remember, have fun, all right? Now we're gonna turn our brush horizontally, and we're gonna come to the, the canvas, and just where we know our imaginary middle of the line is here, we're gonna leave a strip of yellow in the middle, and we're gonna turn our brush horizontally, and we're just gonna bring some lines in, okay? Now it's quite tricky to get a, a thin line, and the best, best way I can describe to get a thin line is make sure you've got a good moist brush, that your paint is on the um, end of your bristles of your brush, and that you don't press too hard. If you press too hard, you'll get a thicker line. If you press too um, light, you'll get a thinner line. Now, it's up to you whether you want a thick or thin line. No right or wrong, okay? Just do your best. And what I'm gonna do is just pop in left to right lines, okay? Now I'm doing this a bit quicker than, than, um, than maybe you could um, do it, but that's absolutely fine. Now the lighter I go, the more relaxed that I am as well, the more those lines will actually um, just be delicate and light. Please do not worry if you, I'm gonna show you the other side, you, you do your thing. I'll show you on the other side um, a different uh, 
a different effect. Perhaps if you're finding it hard to, to be light, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go a bit harder and you'll see it doesn't really matter, okay? You can always just pop the paint on quite blocky. I've lost quite a bit of paint there because I haven't made enough. There we go. So you can be quite blocky like this and that's fine. That's a lot harder and a lot of a, a thicker line here and that's fine as well. So I've done quite a thin side and quite a thick side. So what you could do if you've done quite thick lines, wash your brush out. How do we blend? I told you earlier, clean, wet brush, okay. You can do this, you don't have to do it. A clean, wet brush, turn it horizontally. And what you're gonna do is just go over and just very, very carefully just do a little blend there we're not looking for a flat effect, as in just all one block colour. We're looking to just bring a little bit of orange, lines and a channel of yellow. Okay, perhaps now pause me and carry on doing your um, orange. Remember to leave that channel because this is where the sun is sitting and then we'll put some a white sun on at the very end and a, a reflection down the middle of the yellow channel that's on the sea. It's all a process. Stick with me. Come back when you're ready. Okay. Okay, the only other color that we have on this picture is black and white. It's often, our paintings will often finish with black and white being our shadows and our highlights, okay? So we are gonna do the black now. By the time that we get to the highlights, will have the, the black will have dried so we can pop some little maybe some little lights onto the the horizon there on the on the um on the backdrop um maybe we could highlight some of the birds but let's just do the mountains in the in the background and a, and a foreground kind of um um feature that, that could be plants could be could be anything um, but it just frames the image which is really important I'm going to bring in some um, some branches and then we'll put the two little birds on, okay? Right, so in this, um, for these two large uh, foreground and backgrounds here, I'm still going to use a big brush. Now this is a three quarter inch brush and I, I didn't really want to tell you the size of the brush because I want you to use whatever brush you feel is, is available and, um, and is suitable. Totally up to you. Please don't get hung up at all about how um, and what brush to use. Do your best and try to forget about the process because I think all too often we forget about the fun side. Okay, so I've wet a clean wet brush and I'm just pulling out a little bit of black. Now, black is generally very, very gloopy. It's a pigment that's very strong. So maybe just um, look for a little bit of a watered down, not too watered down, don't be, don't be worrying too much about watering it down too much, but enough for it to glide. You'll know because it will really dry out. So you don't want it to dry out too much. Okay, at this stage, I'm just gonna put, I'm turning my brush to the um, to horizontal position, and I'm just going to put a line across, which is my background, okay? So here we go. A lot of you will hold your breath. Don't hold your breath, just breathe. And just very carefully, let's hope I can do a straight edge. It's not, it's not often I can. Okay, here we go. Who knows what that looks like? I can't see what you can see. Again, you might have dripped. Don't worry, just go with it. Use it as a learning process, okay. Um, we're going, perhaps you can pause me and just do your line. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna now um, put this brush down Okay, and I'm maybe gonna get the medium brush out. It's a nice round brush, but it does give us this curve that we're looking for, okay? And I'm gonna go back and get some, some, um, some black. And I'm just gonna pop any shape you want. Just remember, it goes low in the middle, and you can just, when I say any shape, it's not about getting it precise. Let's just start maybe two inches from the, the edge, and just do a little wiggle and come down into the middle, roughly where your channel of yellow is, okay? And then you're gonna do a little wiggle going up like this. Perhaps you could pause me at this point, do your, do your line, come back to me in a minute. 
So we also have down at the bottom here. Now I, you can see here, I left a gap here, but I've actually not done that here. And that's absolutely fine. So we're going to do what we call happy little accidents um, and just actually bring in a new feature <laughs> and bring this down into here. And I'm making sure I go over the yellow because you don't want white bits in. So I'm going quite low. Again, low in the middle and high at the edges, okay? And perhaps you can pause me there, come back to me in a minute. Um, at this point, we want to fill in the black, okay? So I'm now going back to my large brush, the one that we used right at the very beginning. And now I'm just gonna paint in and I don't want it to be a see-through black, I want it to be quite a strong black. So if you've got too much water in there, it will start to feel see-through. You don't really want that, you want a nice strong black. So I'm going to go back, get some more every time I run out of black. There we go, we're looking for a nice strong black. Okay, and then we're going to just follow that line, fill that in. This is the easy bit, isn't it? Filling it in is the easy bit once we've done the outlines, okay? So we're going to go into the middle and fill a little bit out. You don't need too much in the middle. And then we're gonna go this way here. You don't have to worry about rushing or being too precise. You can always pause me, come back to me, fill it in in your own time. I think one of the worst things about following with someone is that you rush and you don't need to rush at all, okay? And then we're gonna fill in this other side here, okay? You take your time, you pause me when you want, do your bit and then come back. It has to be fun or it's not worth it. And if you find yourself getting stressed, maybe just um, take a bit of time, pop away, go and get a coffee um, and just come back to it when you, um, when you feel a little bit better. It's not easy to believe in yourself that you can paint, but you really can paint. And as I said before, I think just somewhere along the way, if you ask a load of children if they can paint, they are so confident that they can paint. And that's normal because actually we're born creative. But if you actually um, ask a load of adults whether they can paint, most of them will say, I paint like a four year old. I can't paint for toffee. That's a normal thing to think when you're an adult. But it's, it's just because somewhere along the way, we just thought we couldn't do it. But we should be able to say that we create as much as we can walk, talk, uh, write, but we all write differently, we all paint differently, we, we walk differently. So actually, why can't we paint? We can. So you do your style and be proud of your style, okay? It's absolutely important that you accept your style is yours and no one can tell you that it's not right, okay? Perhaps pause me and do your foreground and background, okay? So now we are going to do the branches. It may look like a hard thing. It is getting hard, I suppose, in terms of it getting more of a feature, um, but um, it's, it's easy when you know how. So let me show you. Back to our large brush, okay? Now, all of these brush, it, brush strokes here are done with this large brush, believe it or not. So we're gonna turn our brush this side horizontally again, and we're gonna start thick and go thinner and try to breathe nice and calmly through it, okay? I'll show you this now. So we're gonna go roughly about two inches down if, it, if you're using this size canvas, or if you're using a smaller one, just roughly about that far down. So you're going between maybe splitting it into thirds between the top and the horizon line. One, two, three branches coming out there. Now what you're gonna do is turn your brush horizontal and you're gonna just put the first line in. Just remember, you're barely touching the canvas. You've got a nice moist brush and you've just got paint on the end of your, br your, your brush there. If you get that right, you can flow. If it dries off, you need more water. Okay, I'm just gonna thicken out the end and just flow that through, okay? Not easy, do you, and just make sure that you are calm, relaxed, 
have a little co cup of coffee and a biscuit and come back to it when you're ready. This is important that you then, what we're gonna do is branch off. So you could use a smaller brush at this point, you could use the same brush, but you just have to twist the brush as you're going so that you get uh, a flow. Okay, so I'm just gonna branch off up here. I'm gonna thicken out the bottom. I'm gonna branch off here and I'm gonna branch up here. You don't have to do exactly the same as me. I'm gonna do a branch off here, thicken out the bottom. So always thicker at, towards the base of the branch, thinner towards the bottom, up towards the top. So here we go, there we are. And then maybe you could do smaller. You might wanna to change to a smaller brush for that. Okay, perhaps you could pause me here and have a go of it yourself. You are gonna do two more of them and, um, and then we'll do the birds. Okay, here we go. So I'm now going to do another branch there. There we go. There is no wrong or right, remember that. We're branching off here. It's very, very important that you do your own thing, okay? We're going here and we're coming, we're gonna do another branch here. Pause me at any time and do your own thing. Now, the branch on the third one crosses over and that's where your birds are gonna sit here. You might wanna change brushes, go a bit smaller. There we go. And let's just do a few little more branches off here. Be careful that you're not intersecting where your birds are gonna sit, okay? Okay, maybe you could do a few more branches down here. It's entirely up to you, but just thicken out the base when you do it, okay? Okay, I know I've gone fast. You do it in your time, pause me now, and just take your time. It's entirely up to you to do whatever you want to do. Oh, I've dripped, I'm not worried. If you ever worry about doing anything like that, it's so easy to have a meltdown and not think, I've ruined it. But look here, and what we can learn from this is that we could just pop a little bit of water into the kitchen towel and just press and hold and wipe. There is no, honestly, there's no wrong or right here and actually the, the paints are so versatile that you can actually rub them off with a little bit of water and kitchen towel. So the world is your oyster when it comes to painting. Um, okay, I would just, I'm a bit unhappy with um, the see-throughness of this branch, so I'm just gonna do that now. There is a little bit too much water in, in this branch here. So I've now just used solid black there, okay? All right, the only other thing is our, yeah, pause me and come back to me when you've done that. We are going to now do the, the birds. They're very easy. Try not to worry too much about them. There are two birds. I will show you the birds and then when you're ready, perhaps you could do it in your own time, okay? So. The birds are sitting one is looking at the other, the other is looking out. You can see here that the bird has its beak looking at the other. Um, actually, the branch is coming through and it makes it look like the bird is looking at him as well. Could be a bird, uh, um, could be a, um, a male and female bird, could be two, two, two friends, who knows? Perhaps you want to do your family, it's up to you. So the way we do this is we're using our little brush and the little brush is um, really great for fine details. So what we're gonna do is just do a round circle here. Now that's one head, okay? We're gonna mimic it the same on the other side. Now this is fine details. And if your hand is quite shaky, um, if you've got anything that makes you worry that you don't, you know, that you can't do the fine details, perhaps get some help, perhaps don't, don't do it if you feel like you, you, can't, you can't do a small, um, 
a small, don't do it with a brush. Perhaps you want to use your, your little finger. Um, you know, I could do another little bird here. Just perhaps your little finger here. Perhaps you could go back and just then do a body with your little finger and not use the brush. You can do whatever you want, okay? Just make sure you have fun. Okay, I've put another bird on when I didn't plan to, and that's good. Right, the body, the one on the left is just sitting on the branch and it's just got another bigger, I would say the top size is like a petit pois pea and the bottom is more like a garden pea. It's just to, you know, give you a reference of size. And then I'm gonna do, because um, he's sitting on the side, um, he's more kind of um, an oval shape. Okay, and we've done another little bird there. He's more of an oval shape, so he's kind of like slanting, like an, if you turned it um, horizontal, it'd look like an eye shape. So you're just slanting that slightly, going back to get more paint. And I'm just now gonna do the tail, and that is an easy flick, 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 coming from the base through the branch, and it's flick, flick, flick. And again, you just flick in, just to give him a little bit of sense of a, of a tail, okay? There we go. And then maybe for the third one, could be another family member or um, who knows. I'm just gonna do a little flick, flick, flick there. We've got three birds here. I just wanted to show you, you could use different techniques to get the same result. Little beak, very, very hard detail to put. Just a tiny little flick out for his beak, looking towards him. And if you wanted to, you could make the other bird look out towards him. And then I'm going to leave his little head looking out there. So he's not got a beak at all, okay? Oh, I'm going to give him a beak, come on. Why not? It's like he's saying, um, can I have a hug, please? Right, so there's our birds. And then the only other thing to finish with is our sun and our highlights, a little bit of white and then you're all done. Perhaps you could pause me here, finish your birds and come back to me in a minute. So the only other thing we have left is white. Here is our round white, uh, a round brush with white on the end. Let's do our sun roughly in the middle here and we're just gonna pop a sun down there. There we go. Now I've slightly moved my middle um, I should have done it in the middle of this uh, yellow channel. That's not a problem. I'm just gonna make my sun bigger and make it into a bigger sun so that it lines up with the channel in the middle. There we go. I think that's good. You can do as small as a bigger sun as you want, okay? Again. Okay. We call them happy little accidents. They basically help us not be too hard on ourselves, be kind to ourselves and do our own thing. Because anything can look good when you actually don't overthink it. So I'm now just gonna put some reflections in. We're coming right to the end. So this is just a left, right lines going all the way down the middle. And look at that, it just makes it all pop out, makes it all the reflection feel like it's you're in you're in the sunset and it's actually really important at this stage that you take a little step back or pull back from the image and just have a look at what that looks like. I can't see it very well because I'm standing to the side, so I'm gonna pull back. Oh, I can see my sun is not actually very round. You can change your perspective just by taking a little step back. There we go. There you go, we've got a nice red, not red, we've got a nice white sun there. There we go. So just some, some white down at the middle. Be loose with that. It doesn't need to be too specific. And then perhaps just to finish off, pause me there if you'd like, come back into um, doing some highlights on the, the background there in a minute. Okay, so it's just now popping a little bit of dots in the background. I've got the same, you could use the little brush, you could use the medium brush. I've used the medium brush and it's just like giving tiny 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 little dots here um, just to give an effect of some sort of like city background light okay they are tiny dots and also they're quite um, you know uh, see-through so I've used quite strong white there but you could 
again use your little finger if you wanted to and just kind of create a little bit of a mottled stippled we call that stippled there we go it's actually a technique that a lot of artists use actually there we go just filling in and you could add a bit of white up here in the left hand corner there we go and we're coming right to the end now finishing touches if you really did want to is you could add some white highlights to the tree behind it so you could just do a little bit of white just reflecting off the sun maybe on the birds as well I haven't done this on the original but just on the right hand side of the birds you don't really want to give them an eye because you won't be able to see that but just a little highlight perhaps you could put some highlight onto the branches there we go just to give it a little bit you could maybe put some dots some stippling down here there we go what artist uses stippling like this it's Monet Monet used stippling so there we go you can just do whatever you like and don't forget the all-important signing okay so my name is Lindsay Burgess I'm gonna put LB in the corner and you might want to put something else obviously your initials or maybe if you're giving it to someone that you love maybe put their name in there um, but that's it I hope you've enjoyed yourself please remember that painting should be fun and mainly just be kind to yourself and just take today as an example of starting something new and um, perhaps you can take it up as a hobby okay thank you bye bye